discussing mathematical induction. Mathematical induction is a proof technique, not unlike direct proof or proof by contradiction or combinatorial proof. In other words, induction is a style of argument we use to convince ourselves and others that a mathematical statement is always true. Many mathematical statements can be proved by simply explaining what they mean. Others are very difficult to prove. In fact, there are relatively simple mathematical statements which nobody yet knows how to prove. To facilitate the discovery of proofs, it is important to be familiar with some standard styles of arguments. Induction is one such style. Hey everyone, real quick, I just want to mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. All right, let's start with an example. You need to mail a package, but don't yet know how much postage you will need. You have a large supply of eight cent stamps and five cent stamps. Which amounts of postage can you make exactly using these stamps and which amounts are impossible to make? All right, so perhaps in investigating this problem, you pick some amounts of postage and then figured out whether you could make that amount using just eight cent and five cent stamps. Perhaps you could do this in order. Can you make one cent of postage with eight cent and five cent stamps? No. Can you make two cents, three cents, and so on? If this is what we did, we're actually answering a sequence of questions. We have methods for dealing with sequences. Let's see if that helps. Actually, we will not make a sequence of questions, but rather a sequence of statements. Let me explain what I mean by that. We're going to let P of N be the statement, you can make N cents of postage using just eight cent and five cent stamps. So we're gonna, I'm gonna write that out because it's so important. This is gonna be, you can make N cent, N cents of postage using eight cent stamps and five cent stamps. So P of N is gonna represent the truth value of this statement. Since for each value of N, P of N is a statement, it is either true or false. So if we form the sequence of statements P1, P2, P3, P4, which I'll write out here, P1, P2, P3, P4, the sequence will consist of T's for true and F's for false. In our particular case, the sequence starts false, 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 because you can't make any one cent stamps, two cent stamps, three cent stamps, four cent stamps, since the cheapest stamp you have is five cents here. But you can make a five, uh, five cents for stamps using one five cent stamp. You can't make six, you can't make seven, you can make eight, that's possible. You can't make nine. You can make 10 by using two five cent stamps. And then let me see if I get this right. I think, ele yeah, 11 stamps you can't make. And then, oh, you can't see that on the screen. Let me fix that for you. I'm gonna continue the sequence down below. 
Where are we at here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can't make eleven. Can you make twelve? You can't make twelve. Can you make thirteen? Yes, you can make thirteen, and so on. Because p of one, p of two, p of three, p of four are all fall, false. You can't make one or two, three or four cents of postage. P of five is true. Use one five cent stamp, and so on. Let's think a bit about how we could find the value of p of n for some specific n. The value will either be true or false. How did we find the value of the nth term of a sequence of numbers? How did we find a of n, a sub n? There were two ways we could do this. Either there was a closed formula for a n, so we could plug in n into the formula and get our output value, or we had a recursive definition for the sequence, so we could use the previous terms of the sequence to compute the nth term. When dealing with sequences of statements, we could use either of these techniques as well. Maybe there's a way to use n itself to determine whether we can make n sense of postage. That would be something like a closed formula. Or instead, we could use the previous terms in the sequence of statements to determine whether we can make n sense of postage. That is, if we know the value of pn minus 1, and I'll write that out here. Uh, let me actually move this down just in case anyone's writing anything. Oh, we got some extra stuff from the previous lecture I just did. Let me erase that. There we go. Okay, so again, let's say if we know the value of pn minus 1, can we get from that to the value of pn somehow, if we know the value of pn minus 1? That would be something like a recursive definition for the sequence. Remember, finding recursive definitions for sequences was often easier than finding closed formulas. The same is true here. Suppose I told you that P43 was true. Now, why is it true? Just assume that it's because I told you. It is true, but just assume that I just told you that P43 was true. Can you determine from this fact the value of... P44? Whether it is true or false? Yes, you can. Even if we don't know how exactly we made 43 cents out of the 5 cent and 8 cents, 8 cent stamps, we do know that there was some way to do it. What if that way used at least five, uh, three 5 cent stamps, making 15 cents? We could replace those three five cent stamps with two eight cent stamps, making 16 cents. The total postage has gone up by one, so we have a way to make 44 cents, so P44 is true. Of course, we assume that we had at least three five cent stamps to make P43 here, so that we can convert them to uh, those three five cent stamps into two. 8 cent stamps to make P44, but what if we didn't? Then we would have at least three 8 cent stamps, making 24 cents. If we can replace those three 8 cent stamps with five 5 cent stamps, making 25 cents, then again we have bumped up our total by one cent, so we can make 44 cents. So P44 is true. In the next video, we'll continue this example and formally introduce the details of mathematical induction and we'll be very, very formal about it. I'll see you then.